All right, guys, so we've got a 2013 Camaro that the remote uh, for it is kind of, I don't know, deformed here on the push button pad. And it still works. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, remote start works. So, I. Uh, I bought a new remote. The problem is I don't need to get a new key cut. The key is fine. Uh, to get a key cut, I think is uh, I think they charge like twenty five or thirty bucks at my local locksmith just to cut the key, not to program the remote. So what I'm going to do is I don't know if you can see that there's a roll pin right there. Well, these remotes I got off Amazon. Uh, I think they're about 25 or 30 bucks for the pair and you can see that they uh, they're the same style but the key's not cut obviously I have the roll pin and so what I'm going to do to be able to program these what happens so there, there's no chip or anything in this metal part of the key the chip on these style remotes are in the actual remote itself and I'm talking about the immobilizer chip so whenever you program one of these you can do it without a scan tool whenever you put the key in and turn it on it recognizes the immobilizer chip in this remote uh, the immobilizer light will go off indicating that it's recognized the remote and you can start the vehicle so what you gotta do is on a new remote either have the key cut so you can stick it in the ignition and turn it on or swap these out which is what I'm going to do now you can take the entire remote apart and it is I mean it's other than the battery door it is snapped together really really good and you, you kind of end up boogering it up I've actually done that I don't prefer that method the method I prefer is just knocking this roll pin out and as long as you've got a decent well, it doesn't even have to be a decent set, but just a set of punches. And this is a roll pin punch set. I'll put a link. A roll pin punch set, if you don't know, the ends of the punches have a little, uh, basically a little aligning tip on them. That way, the punch doesn't slide off the roll pin. It keeps it lined up in the center so you can punch it out. So I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to do this. And all you really have to have is a little hammer, roll pin kit, uh, maybe a little pair of dikes uh, like I've got there. But let's go over and I'm going to show you how to do this. i uh, got the roll pin uh, punch and the hammer over here. I'm going to bring the original key over. Right there's my hammer. Right there's my uh, punch. So I'm going to need both hands real quick. So let me get the key clamped in here. Actually, I can do it right just like this. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up to where you can kind of, you know, about midway there. Put this key in this vise. And you can have someone just hold it. You can tape it. Uh, you know, you can tape it if you need to. And this uh, punch is, is just a little big. Okay, so you can see I've kind of got it knocked out right there. That's where those dikes come in. And the dikes I'm talking about are these right here. Now you got to do... And all this is is just a piece of metal. So now, and I'm not going to put this in yet. So here's the original remote. Let me go over and do that to the new remote. I'm not going to put it in yet. I'm going to save that roll pin. I'm going to save the uh, the blade. Going to have to have that. Going to save this. Remember, this still works. 
So let me go over. I'm going to pull the the uh, key blank out of the new remote, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I went ahead and punched the uh, the blank keys out of the two new ones because I'm going to go ahead and program both these. And uh, of course, I've got the original key out of the uh, working one. So now let's go to the car. Okay, we're in the car. I have the original remote with the original key that we removed from it, and I also have the new remote that we took the key out of, the key blank, and basically what the procedure is, is I'm going to use this key to temporarily be able to stick it. So the way this works, you've got an immobilizer coil right here. There's a chip in this remote that as long as it's close enough to this immobilizer coil, it will pick it up as either a programmed or unprogrammed key for the car. So you have to have a key or a way to turn the key cylinder while having the actual remote close enough to the immobilizer coil to pick it up. And to put it in program mode, you have to use an original key, working key that starts the vehicle. We're going to stick it in the, the uh, cylinder. We're going to turn it to the on position. We are going to watch our immobilizer light, which is going to be up here on the cluster. When that light goes out, we're going to turn the key off, pull the whole thing out of the lock cylinder, I'm going to swap this key into the new remote, stick it back in, turn it to the on position, wait for the immobilizer light to go out. We're going to start the vehicle, make sure that it runs, make sure the immobilizer light goes out. We're going to turn the vehicle off and verify that the remote is programmed to the car. And then we'll have a new remote without having to get a key blank cut. So I'm going to set this right here on the console so it's handy to get to. I've got the original remote. Got the key in it. Stick it in the ignition. Turn it on. We're watching this light right here. When that goes out, you have about five seconds to do this. So I'm going to pull this out. Throw that one over there in the seat. Put this one back in. Light should go out. When it goes out, verify the car starts. I'm going to make sure the mobilizer light goes out again while it's running. It does. That tells me that this uh, remote is now programmed to the car. Turn it off. Make sure that the lock works. And there you have it. So I'm going to program the other remote. This was a two-pack. I bought two of these. I'm going to go ahead and program it, and I'll just leave it in a drawer. And if the same thing happens to this remote or something, you know, this remote quits working, all I've got to do is swap this key over into that remote, and then I've got me another good working remote. Um, as long as you have a cut key, there's no reason to trash your remote with the key in it when this is actually all you need for the new remote. Hopefully all that made sense. Anyway, there you are. So I'm gonna, so at this point, if it's not uh, self-explanatory, I'm gonna take and make sure that whenever you put the roll pin back in, you got a little groove right here on the, uh, on the key. Make sure that groove is going the right direction and then just knock your roll pin back in back through the hole and then you've got a another flip key uh, that's ready to go and ready to work with a remote that that works anyway that's it for this video hope it helps somebody you guys take care